Okay. Hello again. This is part two, the feasts of the Lord. Please make sure you watch the first part of this video. The first part of this video will be in the description box. Uh, the link for it will be in this video, as in the first video when this is uploaded, being vice versa, you know. In the previous video, we got up to the fourth feast of the Lord, the, um, the blowing of trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. Now we start in, in this video with the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Leviticus chapter 23. We want verses 26 on to verse 32. Now, in the previous video, we saw how Passover, uh, for instruction in righteousness, can be likened on how to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, brought us out of Egypt, the world, from under the headship of Pharaoh, Satan, okay? And we have the first fruits within us, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was the first fruits who brought in this dispensation. It said, and we, we covered this in the first video, how he is the first fruits of them who raised, who was raised from the dead, obviously. Jesus Christ, God our Father. He was not the first one who was raised from the dead, obviously. We discussed that in the previous video. And with the first fruits that is within us, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Feast of Weeks, the results of those first fruits, okay? Feast of Weeks, which is also called Pentecost. Having the first fruits, we have that gift of the Holy Ghost. And on Pentecost, the Holy Ghost was given unto the apostles and whatnot, okay? So the Feast of Weeks, we covered that. And uh, the uh, blowing of trumpets. Now we pick up on the Day of Atonement. But we, in the first part of this video, we were tying in things onto the New Testament. Uh, and see how they correlate onto such. This one, the Day of Atonement. The only thing for our instruction in righteousness that you can arrive at is where in 1st Corinthians or 2nd Corinthians excuse me uh, chapter 13 where it talks about examining yourselves prove your own selves okay we can get instruction and in righteousness for that through looking at the Day of Atonement but the Day of Atonement has absolutely nothing to do with us obviously obviously you're gonna see what I'm talking about and people, you know, trying to look at this for instruction and in righteousness was like, well, the Day of Atonement, when the Lord made atonement for our sins. No, that's more covered in Passover. What is this Day of Atonement about? Well, let's read here in Leviticus, uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verses 26 on to verse 32. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Day of atonement, Yom Kippur. Yom means day, by the way. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So afflicting your soul. Like I said, for instruction in righteousness, examining yourselves proving your own selves, whether you be in this faith. That we can come away, away with for instruction and in righteousness, yes, but let's continue. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Now, our Lord brought us out of Egypt. We went through the door, okay, which our Lord is the door, you know, the blood on the side post and on top. Covered that in the first video, okay. We went through the door on his terms. We went to him, okay, on his terms. Broken, contrite, and fear the Lord. Called upon the name of the Lord. And may he save you if you do that, <laughs> okay? Because remember, it is an issue of the heart after all, okay? So, in verse 28, And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Hmm. But the perfect sacrifice for sin has already been made. Yes, it has been. Let's keep reading. <clears throat> For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Now note the use of soul here. Because under the law in the Old Testament, 
body and soul were connected. That's why if you touched something, it would affect your soul. That's why if you ate certain things, it would affect your soul. Today, in this dispensation, where our Lord Jesus Christ is the first fruits of it, he brought in this dispensation by his death, burial, and resurrection, by the blood he shed on the cross, okay? In this dispensation, if you come to the Lord on his terms, you know, go through the door, um, you have God, the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, living within you. That is the circumcision made without hands. This is why. You can go ahead and eat that pork sandwich. You can eat all those shrimp and crustaceans and lobsters and stuff like that. Okay? You can eat those things because the circumcision made without hands is there. Okay? Okay? That is why. Like I said, we covered that before in several videos before. But, okay, the use of soul here, because, like I said, different dispensation. It was faith and works. In this dispensation, you have to f have faith on what God will do. And by following the law to make blood atonement with the blood of bulls and goats, okay? They weren't objects of faith, you Jesuit. <laughs> wow. Wow. But the use of soul, because soul and body were connected, unlike today where that circumcision made without hands is there if you come to the Lord on his terms and he saved you and you are a new creature, okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 30. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in the same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a... It shall be unto you a Sabbath a Sabbath, or Shabbos, <laughs> Sabbat, <laughs> a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of this month at even. From even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. So the Day of Atonement was a day within a Sabbath, apparently, and you were to afflict yourself. For us today, instruction and righteousness, examine yourselves. We have a day, you ought to have a day, uh, today in this dispensation where you dedicate everything on to the Lord. Yes, we do that every single day. Yes, 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 we do. But one day of rest, okay? The Sabbath, the Sabbath, which is a uh, sign unto the Jews. We'll, we'll talk about the Sabbath here in a little while. Don't worry about that, okay? But go to Hebrews chapter 9, okay? Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Not the concordance. Beg your pardon. Hebrews chapter 9. We want verses 11 on to verse 18. <clears throat> Day of Atonement. Hebrews chapter 9. Verses 11 on to verse 18. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained, obtained eternal redemption for us. The Day of Atonement, what happened was, the high priest would go in behind the veil once a year and utter Hashem, the name, okay? Hashem. And that's when they would make atonement for the children of Israel, as we can see here. But that's what the Day of Atonement was. The high priest would go behind the veil and make an atonement for the uh, children of Israel. Once in a year. Let's read. Verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot, no sin, to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. 
that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they were they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Moses, he died before they went into the promised land, before they implemented the law as a nation. Okay, The law was binding, but Moses died before they went into the promised land. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He is the first fruits of this dispensation, brought in this dispensation. Okay. Whereat, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. So it was the priest that went in and made atonement for the children of Israel. And the atonement for sin has already been made. But see, Israel, the Jew, the Hebrew, not all has rejected, number one, the kingdom of heaven, and number two, the gospel. Hence, this will bring about upon them Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. We want verses 1 on to verse 9. Jeremiah 30. See, there is no more atonement for sin. Okay, there is no more atonement for sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. If you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, and you come to him on his terms, not your own, okay? His blood is there to wash away all your sin. You have God living within you. The perfect sacrifice for sins has been made. There's no more sacrifice to be made. Absolutely. But see, the Jew, the Hebrew, going through the time of Jacob's trouble, someone's going to have to save them because it's going to be so bad to atone for them. See, like I said, there's already been made the atonement of God. There isn't a second atonement to be made. What is the atoning of? Redeeming his people who go through. Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 1 on to verse 9. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. <clears throat> and these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. You have uh, healed the daughter, uh, the hurt of my daughter slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to come in peaceably, offering unto the Jews after we, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, are redeemed, uh, going to come in peaceably, giving them a, a way to make their third temple after the uh, son of perdition, uh, through Catholicism, is going to eradicate all the Muslims, I believe. Because remember, these Christians that are going to get left behind, there are those, a great number of them, who will get saved and get executed by the son of perdition. Okay, that great multitude that gets saved right away during the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, a lot of those people who are going to get left behind are you poor people who are being duped by these people here on YouTube and on other places here are being duped thinking that you're saved because you just believe, because God loves everybody, you're so good that there was a reason God died for you, because he loves everybody, you know, the love gospel, or because you did X, Y, Z, and God, oh, when you came to him, because you did X, Y, Z, he gives you ABC. Nonsense, that kind of stuff, okay? You guys are going to be left behind who are thieves and robbers. Then you're going to realize that we of the Church of the Living God have been telling you the truth all along. And all these devils here on YouTube and on other platforms who've been calling us the heretics and liars, you're going to see who really was telling you the truth. Fortunately, for a lot of you, you're going to learn about it when it's too late. And it's going to cost you your life that right then and there. Because it's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. 
There is no peace coming. The only peace you can have is in Christ Jesus. Don't forget that. Ask ye now, and see, whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year um, period after the redemption of the purchased possession. Erroneously referred to as the Great Tribulation. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. But more specifically, the time of Jacob's trouble. Find me the Great Tribulation. It's funny. People will make a big deal about the Great Tribulation and then when it comes to the Antichrist, it's like, well, we've always called him Antichrist. But it doesn't say the Antichrist. It doesn't say the Great Tribulation. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Anyway, let's continue. Let's read verse 7 again. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. He shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Question! Is Israel serving David their king? No. There are those Jews, Hebrews, who are of the church of the living God, who are serving David their king, Jesus Christ, God our Father. Amen, absolutely. But in totality, Israel, are they serving? The, are they truly serving David their king? No, they are not. And this time of Jacob's trouble, it's the time of Jacob's trouble, where God turns away his attention from dealing with both Jew and Gentile, specifically onto the Jew, the Hebrew. And see, Catholicism, who call themselves Jews, even though they don't utter that word, they call themselves Jews, and they are not. They, they teach replacement theology, okay? That's what Catholics do. So that's why people are so, the Great Tribulation, Christians are going through the Great Tribulation. Yeah, Christians will be going through the Great Tribulation. You're right. Those who are truly saved of the church of the living God, we are going to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for Jacob's trouble. To bring him onto an awareness of his God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, their King, <clears throat> who will come back at the end of it, in a way, atoning for them. Not making, a, not making a second sacrifice, I'm not saying that. But I think you know what I'm saying. That they need to be redeemed from that time of Jacob's trouble because they lived in unbelief. And because of their unbelief, the, the, um, we, the Gentile, were grafted into their tree. Oh, I know you enemies can take this and twist it quite, a, uh, quite well like you like to do. Those who will see this will know what's being talked about. Funny, you never put the link on uh, for the whole video in your attack videos, you little parasites. Okay, so let's continue now. Jeremiah chapter 30, we were just in for the Day of Atonement. Go to Hosea. Hosea, which is right after Amos, uh, right after Daniel, excuse me. Hosea chapter 3. Hopefully we can finish this entire chapter before time runs out. <clears throat> Hosea chapter 3. Okay, remember, the perfect atonement for sins has already been made once. Doesn't mean need to be made again. See, Catholics teach you that you have to continually offer and eat Christ. So the sacrifice of the cross is being continually done, continually done. That's why there is no um, there is no assurance of salvation onto the Catholic because they are earning their salvation. Remember, to the Catholic, it's the sin of presumption to 
know that you're saved, going to go to heaven to be with the Lord because they got to die in a state of grace, remember. Okay? One atonement, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blood shed on the cross, that's it. No more atonement for sin needs to be made because God, the blood of God, paid for our sins. But see, the time of Jacob's trouble, they have to go through that time of purification, affliction, only to be redeemed out of that when they come to their senses and the Lord come back to redeem them, to save them, see. So the Day of Atonement, Day of the Second Coming, maybe? Let's read this. Uh, Hosea chapter 3. This is a long one, I know. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord, toward the children of Israel, who took other gods and loved flagons of wine. Obviously, this is talking about the children of Israel who have gone a-whoring from their God. Okay? So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an omer of barley and a half omer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot and thou shalt not be for another man. So will I offer, so will I also be for thee. So Hosea redeeming Gomer here. Get it? Get it? Okay, let's continue. For the children of Israel shall obey, abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Did a thing, a video, the Lord had me to do a video on the latter rain, how these wicked uh, Pentecatholic care Catholics like to say that latter rain is something for us today and they always tie into it with the blah, 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 uh, nonsense. Latter days is always refer, uh, referring on to the fulfillment of Israel in receiving of their king, our Lord Jesus Christ. It's for a future prophecy for the fulfillment of Israel when it talks about the latter days, okay? So it says right here, And shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Look at that verse. Afterward, after the, after the time of Jacob's trouble, shall the children of Israel... Return and seek their Lord, their God, and David, their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. But see, he comes and redeems them during that time of trouble. See, the whole purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble is to get Israel's attention. Remember how we looked at in the previous video, then all Israel will be saved? That doesn't mean every single one of Israel that who is survived, who is of Israel during that time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now, go to, of course, Amos. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. Amos is right after Joel. Just keep going until you find Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9 is probably that in Zechariah, which we're going to be looking at as well, Amos chapter 9 is, without doubt, the clearest, from verses 11 on to verse 15, is the clearest of the fulfillment that you can read about the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, serving their king and that kind of stuff. Amos chapter 9, verses 11 on to verse 15. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of, a day of David that has fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, when David was king. And when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back at his second coming, he's going to rule as king over the entire earth for a thousand years, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? That they may possess the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, 
and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Hmm. Plower, plowman, reaper, treaders of grapes, sow a seed. During the kingdom of heaven, I've talked with you about this before. During the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be a system of farming. This technology as we know it, going to go bye-bye, man. Can you imagine that? Not, not having a hell phone, uh, not having a computer or any of your electronic gizmos. It's going to be farming. He's going to heal the earth. He's going to bring back the earth in a way because of what, you know, the poison that is being um, pumped onto us through um, genetically modified foods and whatnot. During the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming. Okay? Nothing but farming. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, and shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. See, during the kingdom of heaven, it's farming. Okay? All this techno stuff. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord God. Future fulfillment. Future fulfillment and talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, his second coming, to rule and reign as king over the Jews. The Jews who are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. And the day of atonement is a day where they are to afflict their souls and make an offering to afflict their souls. So, and I believe, and I teach, that midway during the time of Jacob's trouble, midway through it, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to go into the third rebuilt temple and say, here I am, I'm your God. And he's going to look like the Catholic Jesus. Okay? It's going to be at that time that the Jews, some of the Jews, the Hebrews, are going to, I believe, wake up and be like, Wow. Wow. It's going to click. Finally. I mean, you look at the Holocaust, which was a form of judgment against his people. Okay? Before the Holocaust, you read Eli Wiesel's book, Night. I highly recommend it. You see what they were doing right before the Holocaust of the Jew in World War II, which was the focal point, the exterminating the Jew of the Jesuits. The Jesuits' focal point in World War II was exterminating the Jew. Okay? That was their focal point. Even though they went after the, uh, others and whatnot, their main focal point was going after the Jew. Don't forget that. Don't forget that, okay? But right before the Holocaust, they were doing what? Reading their Talmud. Practicing their Kabbalistic Judaism. You look at what's going on in Israel today, it's the same thing, but worse. <clears throat> it's the same thing just as they were doing just before the Holocaust of World War II. And unfortunately, just as the coming Holocaust, which is going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. And they're going to need to be redeemed during that time. That The, the blood atonement has been, already been made. They're going to have to be rescued. Unless the Lord had shortened the days, no flesh should be saved. You read about that in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, which is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, that they have to endure to the end to be saved. It's a marathon race. Hmm. Kind of like in, uh, the, the blowing of the trumpets, how there are two trumpets, one for the calling of the assembly, church of the living God, and the other one for the journeying of the camps, the 12 tribes of Israel, going through the time of Jacob's trouble. And what's going to redeem them? Who is going to redeem them at the end? Our Lord coming back at his second coming. I believe that the Day of Atonement you can tie into our Lord's second coming. The atonement has already been made on the cross. Okay? And you sick, pervert, devil scum, let them watch the video. Let them watch the video. They'll see what I'm talking about, you devils. Okay? The atonement has already been made. 
but during this time of Jacob's trouble, like we read in uh, uh, Romans chapter 11 in the previous video, Israel shall be saved out of it. Uh, we just read that in Jeremiah, excuse me. <laughs> okay? Because why? The Lord is going to come back. Okay? Now, go to Revelation chapter 19. Speaking of, Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 under verse 3. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. Uh, Revelation 19 uh, comes after the destruction of Roman Catholicism. Can't wait for that day. Can't wait for that day. Oh, we're going to be up there with the Lord, and we're going to see Roman Catholicism destroyed. Oh, it's going to be so sweet. It's gonna, that ain't even going to bring a tear to my glass eye, okay? To see your system destroyed, you vile scum, okay? Oh, that's going to be so joyous to see Catholicism laid waste. But, and uh, verses 1 under verse 3 to start in uh, Revelation chapter 19. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia! Hey, hey, come here. Hey. You know how everybody says hallelujah? Find me hallelujah in the scriptures, please. Go, go, go ahead. Find it for me. You know the word hallelujah is of um, Latin Roman descent? Gee, imagine that. Oh, Brad, now you're saying about against hallelujah? Uh, I, I believe the Lord gave me a video to do on that a couple of years ago. Okay? Um, deal with the scripture. What does it say? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know uh, a man um, who I love in the Lord who loves to use the term hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lovely man. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah is not in scripture, dear friend. It's hallelujah. Okay. Sorry, I had to mention that. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, Roman Catholicism, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever, coming to redeem his people. Israel, from the torment and torture and death brought upon them by Rome. Very similar to how Rome brought about, brought about the Holocaust. Okay. Now skipping a little, we're going to read from verses 11 on to verse 18 now. And I saw heaven open in Re uh, Revelation 19. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful, capital F, and True. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, whereas that man of sin, the son of perdition, has a crown, riding on a white horse, and a bow with no arrows. Hmm. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W, one of seven occurrences, the Word of God. Capital W, Word of God, is always referring on to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Thank you. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us! That's us! That's us! Yeah, that's us! See, we get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. Israel will finally get it, those that survive. They'll get it. And then our Lord is going to come down with those armies. 
that's us, the church of the living God. We're going to come back down with them, see? Okay, let's continue. That's beautiful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Ain't getting away with nothing. See, it's during the kingdom of heaven when the Sermon on the Mount and what is taught in there will take effect. Okay, Catholics like to try to say that the Sermon on the Mount is applicable for us today. To instruct us in ways of righteousness, yes. Doctrinally, no, no. That's for this, the kingdom of heaven. The thousand years of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's when the Sermon on the Mount will come into play. Okay, so. But when he comes back, a sharp sword is going to be going out of his mouth. Ooh, you mean his word? Hmm? Does that mean that an actual physical, literal sword is going to be going out of his mouth? And he's got, I don't know. But uh, I'm likening it on that a sharp sword going out of his mouth. He will speak the word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And he is the capital W word of God. Hmm. hmm. Let you roll that around in your head for a little bit. I know my brother from Croatia will probably eat that one up. Won't you, brother? Thinking on that one. Yeah. <laughs> and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, S-U-N. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. So, what do we see? I personally think when it comes to the Day of Atonement, the Day of Atonement has nothing to do with us today, obviously. There's, there's no need to it. Like I said, for instruction in righteousness, a day to set aside, to examine yourself, you know, that's fine and dandy. But that Day of Atonement, see, Israel... Is going through the time of Jacob's trouble. And it's going to get so bad. that at some point they're going to get it. And then the Lord is going to have to come down. To save them. To redeem them. To destroy Catholicism. It will be a day of atonement for them. Won't it? Won't it? Very interesting, huh? Now let's go back to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. And the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. And as we have talked about and seen examples already, tabernacle, tent. And we hear about Peter say, I will soon put off this tabernacle. Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. Very significant. Well, these are all significant feasts. But let's read this. Uh... Leviticus chapter 23, we will be reading from verses 33 on to the close of the chapter about the Feast of Tabernacles. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. The Word was made flesh. Profound, I know. <laughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy conv an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. 
These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon his day, beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings which ye give unto the Lord. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. We're going to be talking about the Sabbath here in a little bit, so don't worry about it. And ye shall take you on the first day the bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the and the bows of thick trees. And remember, they put palm branches down at uh, and said, Hosanna unto our Lord, as their king came riding in on an ass. Okay? And ye shall take you on the first day the bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bows of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Israelites born, Hebrews, of the bloodline traceable back onto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the line of the Hebrew, okay, which is traceable back on uh, by reading uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians, sorry, <laughs> 1 Chronicles, chapters 1 on to verse 15. I have met Jews, Hebrews, you know, the Hasidim, who can trace their bloodline back to 1 Chronicles. It's quite impressive, actually. It's quite, it's like, wow. <laughs> you know, but anyway, anyway, let's continue. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out to the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feasts of the Lord. Look at that verse, verse 43 that your generations may know. You read in the book of Israel, uh, book of Israel, I beg your pardon, the book of uh, Ezekiel, beg your pardon. You see this, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Ye shall know that I am the Lord. Israel does not know who their Lord is right now. They say, we have even one father, even God. Well, if God was your father, then you would do the works of Abraham. And you would love the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord talks about that. Israel does not know who their father is. Even though unto them were committed all the oracles of God and stuff like that. But they do not know who God is. And see, that is why we the Gentile have been grafted into their tree. To show them their God. And do you think the Jews are jealous of what is called Christianity or being a Christian today is, they laugh at it. They scoff at it and some do literally spit upon it. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out to the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Unto the Jew. They recognize three exoduses. The exodus from Egypt, the exodus from Babylon, and the Roman exodus. Okay? Or captivity, I should say. Excuse me. The Roman captivity. Which they're still under today. They never, you never left that captivity, my friends. Okay? God brought you out of Egypt as he did unto us of the church of the living God, saved us from the world, from the headship of Pharaoh, Satan. Okay? 
brought the children of Israel back from Babylon. Okay? As he brought the children of Israel back from Germany. Okay? But while in the scriptures, under Roman rule, they destroyed the temple. Remember, the Romans destroyed the temple? But see, Rome never went anywhere. Israel is still being allowed to be under the captivity still to Rome. You never got rid of Rome. That's something the Lord's going to have to do. Okay? But you see, the point of the Feast of Tabernacles is remembering from whence you came. Dwelling in booths, giving an offering, that kind of thing. And it's after the Day of Atonement. And with what we've already looked at, the Day of Atonement, when the Lord comes back and saves Israel during the time of Jacob's trouble, when he comes back as, as, as king, the Feast of Tabernacles. Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. This is after the flood. The whole world was overspread by three. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, the Asiatics, such as China, Japan, the Mongolians, the Koreans, and of course, the Israelites, the Jews, okay? Japheth, the Europeans, Ham, the Africans, okay? Shem, Ham, and Japheth, those three overspread the whole earth, okay? And also unto Shem can be likened the American Indian, Stuff like that, okay? But it's Shem, Ham, and Japheth. From Shem, the Asiatics, came the Hebrew, the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, that's why there can be those of Shem that are not of Israel. They come from the same line of Shem, but God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, okay? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? That's from where the Hebrew comes, from Shem. Genesis chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. His younger son mocked him, made fun of him. There's no perverse sexual thing with this, okay? The Lord gave me to do a video on that years ago, literally like year, two years ago or something like that. There's nothing sexual here, okay? And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him, okay? That his younger son mocked him. It's like, hey guys, look, dad's all drunk in the tent. Come on, look, look at him, ha, ha, ha. That's what his sin was, okay? And he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And I have met people who look at verse 25 who have tried to validate making slaves of the Canaanites. There are some people who are so desperately evil. Verse 26. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Shem is from where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shem is from where the Hebrew comes. All of Shem is not Hebrew. Don't forget that. Okay? And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. It's Shem's tent. And from Shem's tent comes the Hebrew. And Canaan shall be his servant. Shem's tent, the tent of Shem. It's Shem's tent. From Shem's tent comes the Hebrew. Okay? 
And of course, now let's let's look at Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 8. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 8. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, Elijah, talking with them. Uh, the two witnesses, by the way, in the book of Revelation, the two witnesses are Moses and Elijah, not uh, not uh, Elijah and, uh, what's the other one they say? Enoch. No, no, it's Moses and Elijah, not Elijah and Enoch, okay? It's, it's right, here, right here. It's right here, and you read about the two witnesses, it's obvious that it's Moses and Elijah, okay? You ask a Jew about Enoch, who is he to them? Significant uh, of their people, yes, but they reverence who? The law of Moses, and at the Seder dinners, the Passover dinners, they always leave a place for uh, um, Elijah, and also one for Miriam. <laughs> Warning! Find that for me uh, in the scripture. They leave a place for uh, Elijah, and they have also a place for Miriam. Empty. Very creepy. Very creepy. But! But they leave, the, and they, at the end of the Seder dinner, they open up the door and wait for Elijah to come through that door. Okay? If you've never gone to a true Hasidim um, uh, Seder, or even uh, just a regular Seder by um, like the conservative ones, uh, you should go to a Passover once. Try to get to a Hasidim one. Yeah, they don't like us Gentiles, and you've got to pay to go to see it. But, you know, you give them the money, they'll take it. And you go. It's it's worth you going as the Church of the Living God to experience a Passover Pesach Seder dinner. It's worth going to at least once. Okay, I've been me and my wife. We've been to several of them. Um, yeah, and we've used and the Lord has used us quite well uh, in those situations. But never mind. Okay, but the two witnesses in the Book of Revelation are Moses and Elijah. Just saying. Okay, let's continue. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah, Elias. Elias, excuse me. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Rise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And of course, right here is where, unfortunately, the Jesus only thing came about. They take it from here. But then again, when it comes to baptism, look. Can you indulge with me for uh, just a little bit of rabbit? Okay, get the hot sauce and teriyaki. I like it with teriyaki too. Um, but Matthew chapter 28. Let's, I want to touch on this really quick. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 on to verse 20. Uh, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. Hashem, the name. In the name, singular, singular, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, body. Okay? baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I have never seen anyone say, in the name of uh, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Brit or whatever they call uh, the Holy Ghost. I've never seen that. 
I've never even found a video where someone is being dunked three times, each with a different name. Okay? I have seen people, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Okay? But as I was baptized, and as I have seen, I baptize, you are here now baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There's only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. And it says, the name of, singular, baptized in Jesus' name. And that's all I'm going to say about that, okay? But I forgive me that rabbit trail, I kind of got off a little subject there, I wanted to bring that up to you, okay? But now go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. See, the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, to, to be in booths, remembrance, enjoying, and that kind of stuff like that. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And to give homage. And whence the Lord comes back at his second coming to redeem Israel, you know, after the Day of Atonement, when he comes back, People are going to have to go during the time of, um, during the kingdom of heaven uh, on the Feast of Tabernacles. But Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 under verse 20. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day, which Israel historically has not done. Hence, that's why we're in this dispensation that we are. Hence, that's why we, the Gentile, have been grafted into their tree. And it's going to take the time of Jacob's trouble for Israel to finally get it. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God. You read the book of Judges, man. Ugh, it's constant. They do good. They go back. They do good. They do bad. You know, it's constant. Constant. We as man cannot survive without the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to prove that during the kingdom of heaven. Has he not already proved it now? which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Oh, how soon are some of us of the church of the living God too quick to forget from whence we came. I start getting uh, a little fear in me about things. The Lord gets angry. <laughs> it's like, have I ever let you down? No, then shut up. Okay, Lord. It's easy for us to forget from whence we came, especially when things start going well, isn't it? Isn't it? Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions, and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee, to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. And remember, and especially in this context, wealth is not specifically money. Wealth is other things, possessions, land, that kind of stuff, herds, okay? But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God which Israel has not remembered. Oh, they they say, well, you know, when they write God, they omit the O and put a hyphen and put G hyphen D. They won't even say, they say Hashem, the name. Okay? Adonai, Lord. Baruch Ata Adonai. Okay? They won't, they, they profess that they know God. But in works, they deny him. With their mouth, they show him much love. But their heart has gone after their covetousness. And unfortunately, 
most unfortunate one. It's going to take the time of Jacob's trouble for Israel to fulfill what is written. Also in Romans chapter 11, God has not for, uh, cast off his people. We, the church of the living God, has not re have not replaced the Jew. But absolutely not. God forbid. Okay? God forbid. God forbid. No, but it's going to take the Holocaust, which is going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with which he sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before, before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the Lord, unto the voice of the Lord your God. And put this in perspective uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, and when he comes back, these nations are going to be destroyed, devastated, because of that man of sin, the son of perdition, for bringing on judgment on this world. And it's going to take our Lord coming back as king to reestablish. Think about it. Okay, think about it. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 32. This is what the Feast of Tabernacles entails. Okay? And when putting it in context with the Day of Atonement, when the Lord comes back to save Israel during the time of Jacob's trouble. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 on to verse 4. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herbs, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is our rock. His work is perfect. For all the, his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. And unto the Hebrew, the Jew, your God is Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is your King. And eventually you will get that. And eventually, those of you who survive will accept that and learn to love that. Absolutely. Now go to Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Oops. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 21 unto verse 25. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Talking about fulfillment during the time, uh, during the kingdom of heaven, okay? They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are speaking, while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And thus shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Seth, the Lord. Has that come to pass today? No, that's future fulfillment during the time of the kingdom of heaven, after the time of Jacob's trouble, when Israel is broken of himself. And as in the Day of Atonement, when the Lord comes back to redeem Israel after he goes through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Zechariah. Zechariah. Chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 on to the close of the chapter. 
And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, talking about uh, when he comes in to establish the kingdom of heaven, shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Okay? So, during the kingdom of heaven, those nations that survive uh, at the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, they're going to have to go and worship the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, keep in remembrance and that kind of stuff, okay? And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And it's going to be farming during the kingdom of heaven. And if you got no rain, you got no crops. You got no crops, you got no food. Without food, you have what? <laughs> Vegans, right? <laughs> and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Hmm, really? This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So during the kingdom of heaven, nations are going to come and worship the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. All, you, uh, all these nations that hate God, who hate Jesus Christ, are going to have to go and worship before him. Yeah. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Fulfillment. See, we're looking at fulfillment. See, the Day of Atonement Israel is going through the time of Jacob's trouble, and it's going to get so bad unless the Lord has shortened the days. No flesh would be saved, and they have to endure to the end to be saved. What is the end of the time of Jacob's trouble? When our Lord comes back for the sake of his people Israel. Okay? Now, go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Verses 1 on to verse 6, the kingdom of heaven. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, the kingdom of heaven. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. And they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. A thousand years, the kingdom of heaven. I believe the sixth dispensation. A lot of people like to call the sixth dispensation the um, time of Jacob's trouble because it's the number of a man. But the man, Christ Jesus, will be king. And the sixth dispensation, I believe, is the kingdom of heaven. Because man, Christ, you know, God is manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God will be ruling from Jerusalem. The man, Christ Jesus, will be ruling from Jerusalem. So that's why I believe that the sixth dispensation is the kingdom of heaven. 
A lot say that the sixth dispensation is the time of Jacob's trouble because that's the time of the man of sin, the son of perdition, and 666, okay, is the number of the beast, which signifies the World Wide Web. And I understand that. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I believe the sixth dispensation is the kingdom of heaven. The seventh dispensation is the final one, eternity. And what changes in that dispensation? See, during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. You read the Sermon on the Mount. It's all works. After the kingdom of heaven. What happens after the kingdom of heaven? Well, what happens though, okay? Let's keep reading in Revelation chapter 20. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, which is Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil was, that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then the great white throne of judgment. The final dispensation, which I teach, is the seventh dispensation, is the new heavens and the new earth, where there will be no evil. All those that loveth and maketh a lie will be cast out. During eternity, who's going to be saved during the eternity? It's done. It's eternity. See, during the kingdom of heaven, it's by works only. It's all works. You read the Sermon on the Mount. It's all works. If you don't forgive someone during the time of during the kingdom of heaven, if you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. That's works during the kingdom of heaven. After the kingdom of heaven, okay? After Satan is cast off, then brings in eternity. All evil will be vanquished forever. After Satan is allowed to come out for a little while, after the thousand years are up, goes out and deceiving all those people who are still are evil that uh, were allowed to exist during the time, during the kingdom of heaven, okay? It's going to be evil still, okay? But he's going to be ruling as king. Evil will be demolished, vanquished with the destruction of Satan. And hence, we'll bring about the Sabbath, the Shabbat, Shabbos, rest. Kingdom of heaven is work. It's all works during the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, they'll have rest from their enemies, but Satan is bound for a thousand years, and then he will be let loose again for a little while to deceive the nations. And then after he is gone, there will be no more evil. There will be no more evil after Satan is finally des destroyed forever. He will be in the lake of fire, burning forever and ever, that is. Hence, eternity, the Shabbat, the eternal Shabbat, the eternal Shabbos, or Shabbos, Sabbath. Go to Genesis chapter 2. What about the Sabbath? What about the Sabbath? See, they settled this in Acts chapter 15, when Judaizers were coming and saying that people had to go back under the law in order to be saved, stay saved, you got to keep the law of Moses, which meant circumcision and whatnot, keeping the ordinances. No, no, no. And we're going to look at that. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he made. The seventh day and the seventh day and final dispensation, okay? And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. See, like I said, I believe that the kingdom of heaven, and this is what I teach, is the sixth dispensation, because Christ the man, Christ Jesus, is going to be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. 
That is what I believe. And the final, and it's going to be a thousand years of peace. Absolutely. Satan's going to be bound, but Satan is going to be let loose again to be dealt with. And during that time, he's going to be the biggest army the world has ever seen. Okay? And we know that during the kingdom of heaven, unless you forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. So that could be mean. And also cast that uh, servant off, and uh, that unprofitable servant, um, into fire. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay? It's after Satan is defeated, the final and seventh dispensation. Eternity. Because the sixth dispensation is by works. After Satan has been dealt with, There will be no more sin. There will be no more evil. Hence rest. Hence rest. Is it, uh, Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16. Verses 22. Under verse 26. Exodus 16. Verses 22. Under verse 26. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Two omers for one man. And all... The rulers of the congregation came and told Moses, and he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said. Okay. Uh, let's read that again. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seethe that ye will seethe. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade, and it did not stink. Neither was there any worm therein. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is the a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall not find, find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Seventh dispensation, eternity. There's nothing to be done. Evil is vanquished. How are you made right in eternity? You're already right. Okay? You're already right. Evil will be done away with. And go to uh, Exodus chapter 20 now, verses 8 unto verse 11. Reading a little out of the Ten Commandments. And the, the law and the commandments were given unto who? Israel, the Hebrew. The Jews, okay? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. And rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Uh, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Okay? The Seventh day Adventists are all about, you know, keeping the Sabbath. And there are those out there who teach today, unless you keep the Sabbath, you're not right with God. Okay? You, you don't need to keep the Sabbath. It's not required for your salvation. Okay, we'll look at that. Uh, now, Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31, verses 13 on to verse 17. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. The Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. So a Sabbath was a sign unto who? The Jews. Okay? Ye shall keep the Sabbath. Therefore, for it is holy unto you, the Jews. Everyone that defileth it, defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. 
Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. It's a sign between him and the children of Israel. And, and remember, this is the New Testament. The death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ brought in the New Testament, the first fruits, okay? We're, we're going to look at verses about, you know, about this, so don't worry about that. Go to Ezekiel now, chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel cap chapter 20. Look, today in this dispensation, if you're a Jew, okay, you want to keep the Sabbath? Even if you're not a Jew, if you want to put aside the day of Saturday where you worship, if you want to use that day alone uh, to concentrate on just the Lord, we do that every day. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. But if you want that day to be your day of worship, knock yourself out, buddy. Go for it. Go right ahead. If you're a Jew, a Hebrew, you want to keep the Sabbath, go right ahead. Do it. It's not required to be saved or stay saved or be right with God. And don't you dare to start telling people that they have to keep the Sabbath in order to be saved. Uh-uh, no, no. If you want to do it, hey, knock yourself out. Go for it. Go ahead. It's not required for your salvation. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 12 on to verse 20. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my namesake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Why? Because they despised my judgments, and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, mine eye spared them, spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them. And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. And with the uh, 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 Shabbos, Shabbat, as they call it today, um, they got what is work, servile work, serving work. Um, they've gotten so crazy with it, even to this very day, uh, using an oven is considered work. Driving a car is considered work. Um, uh, turn, listening to certain things is considered a work. Okay? They get pretty crazy about it. Okay? And our Lord's like, you hypocrites, if an ass falls into a ditch, you're going to go and grab that ass out of the ditch. Okay? Sabbath was made for, the Sabbath was made for man not man for the Sabbath. And see, just as the Hebrews were doing, uh, as Eli Wazel talked about in his book, Night, they're doing today. They've made an idol out of the 
Shabbat. Shabbos or Shabbos. The Sabbath. Okay? They made an idol out of it. And they have turned that which was holy into something profane, taught by the precepts of men. Okay? Now, go to Acts chapter 15. Speaking of, Acts chapter 15. Covered this in the previous video, I believe, but we're covering it again. Okay? Acts chapter 15, verses 4 on to verse 11. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received at the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference, but difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace, through grace, through faith, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So in verse 10, he says, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. See, the law of Moses, no one could keep perfectly. Only God manifests in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, Only he could do it. Only he could do what we could never do at our best. Okay? And we have already seen of how God gave Israel all these statutes. They couldn't keep them. They couldn't keep them. And remember, the gospel was on to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Verses 8 on to verse 14. Remember, the Sabbath was assigned unto the Jews. This was for the Jews. And someone who violated the Sabbath under the law were to be killed. But the fathers of the Jews and the Jews themselves could not keep the law perfectly. And if you read uh, Hebrews chapter 9, which we already read, okay, Jesus came to fulfill, not to do away. Okay, He fulfilled the law by making the perfect atonement for sin. His blood, his death, burial, and resurrection, the blood he shed on the cross. Okay, Hence, nobody has to keep the law today to be saved or stay saved. Okay, Not at all. Not at all. Because the perfect atonement for sin has been made. So does that mean that we are without commandments? Romans chapter 13, verses 9, I lost my place, verses 8, on to verse 14. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. If you do not have the authorized version of the scriptures, this is not in there. If you do not have the authorized version of the scriptures, if you have a Bible, this part isn't in your Bible. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill toward his, to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, 
that now is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we when than when we believed. And amen. The redemption of the purchased possession is closer today than it was yesterday. We know that. Okay, let's continue. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk as new creatures. Remember, the Lord doesn't hold you, a gun to your head forcing you to walk in his statutes. Even if you have him in you, he doesn't force you. Oh, he'll turn your life to a living hell, but he doesn't force you. Neither does Satan force you. Okay? Don't forget that. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, which perfectly describes all the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ and all my personal enemies. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Okay? And now go. let's read verse uh, Romans 14, verses 5, eh, verses 5 on to verse 11. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. What do we read? 2.11. Okay. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. So see, esteeming one day above the another. Okay? Whatever day, if you want to hold a day to where you just concentrate Everything on the Lord. I know we do that every single day. I get that. But if you want to set apart a day, just like, okay, you know, babe, today let's just, both of us together as husband and wife, or if you have a family, let's shut everything off. Let's get together. Let's get the hymn books. Let's, let's get into the scriptures. Let's use this day specifically as a collective family, as a husband and wife. Let us have this day to be a day unto the Lord. Okay. That is what Romans 14 is talking about when it's talking about esteeming one day above another. Okay, What day you choose to worship the Lord. What day you want to give on to the Lord. Okay, If you want to do it on the Sabbath, Saturday, go for it. Knock yourself out. You want to do it on Tuesday. You want to do it on Thursday. Knock yourself out. Okay, Knock yourself out. Right? That's what we're not supposed to judge people on. Okay? Okay? We're not supposed to abuse this, though, to justify paganism! And shh, that's all I got to say about that. Let's continue, though. From verse 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For this, for to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Let's read verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We, the saved, are going to give an account at the judgment seat of Christ. You who are lost, you're at the great white throne of judgment. Good luck. We're all going to have to give an account of ourselves to God. Okay? Okay? Now, 
Let's go to Isaiah chapter 66. See, if you want a, you know, a day of rest where you just turn everything on to the Lord, we're supposed to do that every day. I get that, okay? But if, it, if you want to do it on the Sabbath, go ahead. It's not a requirement for our salvation today. You have to understand that. Again, on the channel here, there are many videos where we discuss that, okay? So, Isaiah chapter 66. We're almost done. You see why this had to be two parts? I don't necessarily like making two-part videos, but it is what it is. This is what had to be. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 10 on to verse 24. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. That ye may suck, and be satisfied with the breasts, of her consolations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be borne upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, Plead is not, oh please, oh please. No, as a lawyer in court, okay? For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Uh huh. Gathers all nations together to destroy them, to bring judgment upon them. And also, during the kingdom of heaven, all nations got to come and worship him. Okay, that are left. Okay? And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish, Pul, and Lud, that draw the bow, to Tubal, and Javan, to the isles afar of off, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring, and they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations, upon horses, and in chariots, and in litters, and upon mules, and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord. And the children of Israel as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. Talking, this is future fulfillment. This will be fulfilled in the future. Okay? And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Behold, I make a new thing. Behold, all things are made new. A new heaven, a new, a new earth. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become uh, new. New heavens and a new earth. Hmm. Let's, let's continue. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, the law, the law will return. Absolutely, during the kingdom of heaven, the law will return. Absolutely. The, the king's going to be on the throne. Okay? So the law is coming back. Okay? And during the kingdom of heaven, okay, the blood atonement for sin, this sin has already been atoned for. But see, as we have seen, and before you read the Sermon on the Mount, um, it's all works. 
The law is going to be returning during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to wor worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Verses 1 under verse 5. And I now, this is after the great white throne of judgment, after Satan has been officially cast away forever. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. No more death, no more evil, no more sin. No more sin. The final dispensation. Peace, eternity. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are faithful and true. And Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 under verse 5. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear, of cris clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life. Meaning, uh, what I see is, here's the river of life, uh, here's the river, and the tree of life is on either side. A big tree, I'm imagining. Okay? In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night, no darkness. There shall be no night there, and they, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And that's what we have to look forward to, brethren. Eternity, a peaceful peace. See, during the kingdom of heaven... Our Lord is going to bring in a thousand years of peace. But see, Satan has not will not have been dealt with until after that thousand years of peace. And then he gets released and then gets destroyed. And then the final dispensation where no one needs to be saved after that because there will be peace forever. Peace forever. There's going to be war at the end of the kingdom of heaven, the thousand years. Satan's going to go out and going to bring the biggest army the world will ever see. And going to be destroyed. Just like that. Just like that. And then comes in peace. Which we have to look forward to. Amen, amen, alleluia. And that, brethren is going to do it for this video, <laughs> this two-part video, our look at the feasts of the Lord. Passover, Pesach, first fruits, day of the first fruits, Yom Habakorum, Feast of Weeks, also known as Pentecost, Shavuot, the blowing of trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, 
Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. And peace, rest. Shabbat, Shabbos, which we await. Which we await, but not yet. <laughs> not yet. That is going to be it for this video, dear brethren. Um, hopefully this has been... Um, Hopefully this has been helpful to some of you. Um, like I said, this was something that I had wanted to do for a while, but just recently the Lord's like, now oh, let's do this. Because we are rapidly approaching. The time is coming. When, we don't know. But the redemption of the purchased possession is coming. And um, <laughs> that is our hope. That is our hope. And are we, we are to live every day in that hope that this day today could be the day we get redeemed. The winter, we're, we're in winter right now. Right now by me, I've got a bunch of snow. And um, in accordance with today's the second, did you read Song of Solomon chapter 2, which talks about the um, redemption of the purchased possession? You know, the catching away, which happens in the springtime? You look about, look at what's going on in the world, how everything is going against Israel right now. It's in Israel where they've discovered this flu-rona. Oh, times are going to get worse, brethren. Times are going to get much worse. I hope you're prepared. Prepare yourselves. Be strong in the faith and keep your eyes upon Jesus. Don't back down. Don't quit. Don't quit. The Titanic is sinking. And she's doomed to sink. But let us be as those men who shoved coal into the engines as long as they could. Until it was time not to shove coal in there anymore. Until they were set free. Thank you, brethren. We love you. We pray for so many of you. Thank you to those of you who pray for us, who help us. Pray for one another. Uh, pray for your brethren and other nations. Pray for the sick, for the weak. Pray for the babes. Warn the babes. Warn the people of these devils and of their doctrines. And thank you so much for watching this if you do. Hopefully this has been... Um, helpful to you. Hopefully the Lord has shown you something. Um, hopefully it's up to him. Now it's 2.52 uh, p.m. my time. Now the long process of uploading a two-part video. <laughs> so thank you, brethren. We love you. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.